Life is like a hurricane here, here in, in Duckburg. Duckburg. Lasers, race cars, airplanes. It's, it's a, a duck blur. blur. Might solve a mystery or, or rewrite, rewrite history. history. Ducktails, woo! woo. <laughs> and that's probably all we can get away with. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And we're sharing our thoughts on the 2017 version of DuckTales, Season 1, Episode 1. Woo! -hoo. Holy dang, man. They brought it back with a blast. Yes. Getting away from some of the 80s campiness and going truer to the old comics and, oh my goodness. And adding their own spin on it. That too. So, um, is it just me, or is Huey kind of dipper? He's the family-friendly portion who has all the planning done. Dewey's the adventurous portion that goes with Grunkle Stanford. And then Louie is the one who is the lying manipulative portion of Dipper. You basically just split Dipper into three. Ah, but they still add their own little bits of twists on it. Kind of like how Webby is like Mabel but more isolated, like if she was kept inside all of her life. So she's more socially awkward and less of a social butterfly like Mabel was. But so much better than the 80s version Webigail. Watching Webigail now from the original is like going back and watching the original Voltron and listening to Pitch. I didn't realize my ears could bleed, and I'm like, how did I watch this when I was younger and not suffer permanent ear and brain damage? Actually, that could explain a lot. Thank you for your vote and confidence of my intelligence. And your ability to recognize audio sounds. Yeah. Oh, and it's nice that we actually get to see Donald more than the first episode, because in the original, he was in the first episode, dropping off the nephews, I think, or we see him being called or talked to at one point. I know he was in He's the series. barely in it. Barely. In this one, we're actually going back to, as you said, the comic roots, where Donald and Stridge were involved all the time. Yes, and they've had a falling out, and now he's reaching out because he doesn't have any other choice. Also, another thing that they're doing in this series is they're breaking one of the things that's usually not talked about in the Duck Tales or the comic books. Huey, Dewey, and Louie's parents. Because in the original comic books, it's mentioned very rarely that the mom was a deadbeat. Got together with someone, had Huey, Dewey, and Louie, couldn't handle them, and dropped them off with Uncle Donald. This is also where the line's really funny in the first episode where Louie's going, so you're finally going to sell us. Yes, it's just perfect because he's been stuck with them for 10 years. So they're at least 10 years old by that. They're probably like 11. Closer to 11. is It's pointed out by Mrs. Beakley that you've been avoiding them for 10 years. Also with Mrs. Beakley, I wonder if she will eventually go, I want to pay Ray so I can be your secretary. It's like, well, now that you're watching Webby, I might actually have the spare time to be your secretary. But you have to pay me more. Grind his teeth. Because in the original comic books, Scrooge did everything he could to spend as little money as possible, which includes tricking his family into signing contracts that made it so they didn't get paid. Well, you notice how he quips about maybe he'd hire the boys because then they'd have to listen to him. <laughs> Though that suddenly reminds me, going back to the Gravity Falls talk, of this great edit someone did of Scrooge McDuck and I suddenly can't remember the color of the shirt so I can't tell you which of the triplets it is. From that scene in the diner where they're going to get pancakes and the nephew goes, so can't I have this? And Scrooge goes, what do you think I am? Made of money? Of course, the dollar bill comes out and he goes, tap, 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 tap. Yes, it's basically the exact scene from Gravity Falls, just redone with the modern DuckTales characters. Mm -hmm. And I love one of the comments below that particular post. I just imagine the reason Scrooge is so big is that entire suit's full of money. Yes, yes, because that would honestly make sense. Mm -hmm. He's Scrooge McDuck, the most Scottish and richest duck in... <laughs> Fun fact, the actor who's playing Scrooge is actually Scottish. Nice. I can't remember his name. I know he's famous because he played a Doctor Who. Ah, that, that explains a lot. So, yeah, I love the voice actors that they got 
for everybody. Yeah, the only character that slightly annoyed me was Glumgold. He's supposed to annoy you. He's the poor man's version of Scrooge McDuck. By all means, it still means he's extremely rich. Yes, yes, but he gets tired of being second best. The funny thing, Matt Pat did a video on DuckTales to figure out exactly how rich Scrooge McDuck actually was. He figured the bajillionaire! It <laughs> okay, was that, that, that was a little high voice to do the nephews, but still. Uh... Yeah, something like that, though it was actually in the trillions. So when he said, a multi-trillion dollar business, that's actually accurate. You can tell Disney went back and did the research. Because Scrooge's actual fortune has never been nailed down. They keep giving vague, unreal numbers. This is the first real number they've given to Scrooge's actual net worth. So it's interesting now that the money bin and the manor are in two separate locations. Mm. I want to say in the 80s cartoon... The money bin was attached to the manor. No, they were separate buildings, but the money but bin... But same property, wasn't it? It was a lot closer than this one. It's more like it was a back part of the property, not an island, compared to how the money bin is now. Also, the money bin was his office, compared to the mansion, which seems to be his office now. Though, based on that scene with the vultures... I think the money bin may still, yeah, the money bin is still his office because he goes and puts the money away after the meeting. Yes. So the money bin is attached to the office and the mansion is a separate residence. Though speaking of that scene, this show is full of references not only to the original DuckTales and the comic books, but to other Disney shows from the original time period that DuckTales aired. Darkwing Duck, Tailspin, though this came later, Goof Troop? They actually named those three cities and towns in the show. Cape Suzette, Tailspin. Well, they mentioned the city for Darkwing Duck. At another point, they mentioned the town that Goof Troop happens in. So, yeah. Also, some of the references to the original DuckTales. They have a head of one of the robots that Scrooge had built that was eventually taken over by the Beagle Boys. Mm -hmm. But if you look, the robots that are very similar to that are in the intro. Yeah, specifically the little robot that, I don't remember his name right now, but the scientist duck built for himself is larger. That's what you see in the intro. You don't remember the giant ones that played yes. hockey? Yes, I remember that one. But I'm actually talking about the little tiny robot that um, Screw Loose, I want to say his last name is. But he's the inventor. He also builds Gizmo Duck eventually. But he had this little tiny light bulb guy who would walk around and stuff with him. The one that they um, show in the intro is like a bigger version of that little guy. And it's Gyro. Gyro. That's his first name. Yes. I'm pretty sure his full name is Gyro Screwloose, which makes total sense with his character. Though that reminds me. I don't know why. But the one thing they didn't mention at all in these first two episodes, though it kind of makes sense, though it does become a plot point later, his number one dime. Because he used to say, it's like, speak about his number one dime. When he says, I bet my bottom dollar, he used to say, I bet my number one dime. No, 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 you bet the bottom dollar, that's safer to lose. Number one dime is very important. Mm -hmm, but they didn't mention it at all. Also, you sounded a little bit like, what's her name? That was kind of the whole point. Ah, because she's always after that thing because it's a precious item that's very magically charged because of how he got it. It's the first bit of money he ever earned. And I have to wonder with um, Donald having gone for an accountant position, that was filled the previous day, was that Fenton? Ooh, hmm. Could be Fenton, because Fenton was Scrooge McDuck's number one accountant. Yes, but that was the position at Glomgold. Also, the fact that Donald thought he could fill an accountant position means that he's probably pretty good at handling money, especially considering he's apparently been around Scrooge a lot. Not to mention the fact that he's been raising three boys and Child Protective Services hasn't taken them away. Though, speaking of those boys, I remember seeing a lot while we were watching that, other than the fact that you kept lumping them all as one person. Well, back in the 80s, they weren't really differentiated. Yeah, yeah they were basically one person. Yeah. That you couldn't decide whether you liked them or hated them. <laughs> They're enjoyable as characters. As people, I want to smack them. Oh. This is their base point. You'll probably grow to love them as they change as characters. Yeah, the klepto, the daredevil, and the do-gooder. I love Louie. Mine, 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 mine. What? He's old. I'm, I'm calling dibs. I love how they were green post-it notes. Mm-hmm. 
I bet you that's actually how they claim things. They have different colored poses that match their shirts. Yes. Also, it was a nice touch that not all three of them are wearing hats. There are no longer recolors of each other. Huey is the only one who's wearing the traditional cap. He's also the only one who seems to be a junior woodchuck as well. Yeah, I can't see the other two having done junior woodchuck. Hmm. Though I like the subversion they do a lot in this series, like, Marbles! Yes! And then, whack! Whack! <laughs> they do that a lot in this show. Give you the idea we're going one way, and then... Whoosh. But it was a good reference, so uh, do kids still like marbles? Because in the 80s, the boys were about the marbles. It was like their Swiss army knife. Yes. You could always use the marbles or the shooter to do something. Mm -hmm. Also, we need to look up what rating this show is because we watched it on YouTube. Legally, I might add. And we get the word kill several times, which Lux previously pointed out is an often censored word in children's television. Mm -hmm. Which means this has to be at least a PG equivalent of a TV show, which, is, which explains why it's on Disney XD. Because they have a lot of shows where they can use the word kill. There's a lot of action and hero shows and stuff like that. And then there's Star versus the Forces of Evil, which I've watched the first like five episodes too, but never continued to watch it. I liked it enough, but maybe sometime later I'll pick it up again. No, Sasami-chan. <laughs> we like you and everything, but I just don't have the time. I mean, look how long it took us to do this. <sighs> but thank you for the support, honestly. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get to it at some point. Unlike Rainbow Rocks, I won't be drag kicking and screaming. <laughs> but back to DuckTales. Woohoo! <laughs> He's going to be doing that a lot. He's been doing that ever since we watched it the first time. I've been humming it like crazy. That stupid intro won't get out of my head. There it is again! Big fluffy unicorns! Big fluffy unicorns! <laughs> I swear, he and Doug Walker need to get together because apparently they can't get this song out of their head. <laughs> Please continue before I start singing. Oh, yes, let's spare the internet that. Can we get on to my nitpick of, oh my god, we actually killed the dragon? <laughs> it's a mystical creature. It may not actually be dead. Because it takes a mystical object to kill a master. Well, to damage a mass. Mystical. A mystical creature. A mystical creature. Yes, so first, that the Klepto took the Medusa Gauntlet, and second, that not only did we turn the dragon back to stone, which seemed to be a state it was okay with, we could put it back with the gong, bang three times, hey, dragon's back again. No harm, no foul. But the head broke off. A little of glue. Fix that right up, some duct tape. Yeah. The, the headless man horse, okay, was okay without a head, but it probably didn't start with one. Also, nice touch when the head fell into the money bin that some coins fell into its mouth. And speaking of that, that scene was awesome, because when we first watched it, we were like, he's going to do it! <laughs> Dive straight into the money! And the nephews are like, I know it! I know Yes, yes, he hunts treasure just to swim in it. I love the fact that they actually just used it other than a gag. Because when they eventually chase after Glomgold, he literally uses it to sneak up on Glomgold. That is a perfect use of that. Yes, seriously, it was like watching a Splatoon matchup. Hide in the ink, come around on the other side, and boom! Awesome. I love how they also use it in the intro. And the new intro is freaking awesome. Yes. And I love how the only instruction the singer got was, sing it like you're singing the DuckTales theme song. <laughs> That's all she got. I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many takes it took. Don't know. I just know it sounds pretty dang awesome. Also, apparently she was someone from American Idol. Mm. I just don't know what season. I just know this because I read some stuff on it after I was able to watch the episode and went, I can finally go on the internet without worrying about spoilers about this. And I just love the buildup when he's yell Every time Scrooge is yelling at the kids, it's such a great buildup. <laughs> like rewinding a little bit to the specific scene of, ah, ding, 
it has to be hit three times and oh you guys already hit it twice <laughs> just that was perfect mm -hmm. not to mention that how could it possibly get worse than this what is going on here there it is <laughs> also in all the years it was in his garage how did it not get hit does it like reset after every 24 hours or something well considering how often webby sneaks in there I don't think anybody ever goes in the garage. Don't you mean garage? <laughs> I love that. I think he's going to become one of my favorite of the triplets. Louis. I like characters like him. Yeah, right now, Dewey is the one I really want to smack upside the head. Also going back to, what's your blood type? What's this? Which one of you is the evil triplet? Louis. Yeah. Louis yeah. <laughs> oh, doesn't even argue it. He just kind of shrugs and I'm like, I agree with that. Yeah, I'll take that. Also, how he teaches Webby to lie. Yes. Webby, your grandmother is worried to call her right now and tell her you are staying at a friend's house. Lying. It's the responsible thing to do. Like, oh my good. Are we allowed to show this to children? Because it's kind of awesome. Yes, it is. So you had one nitpick so far. And there's probably been a couple spread out throughout. Do you have any other ones? Well, the main thing was that and that's not even a nitpick that we killed the dragon. I'm just pointing out the gauntlet only works on organic matter. So we specifically point out that the dragon is made of organic matter, which implies alive. So we killed the dragon. Who knows? Like I said, it's a mystical creature. Even though it was organic at the time, it may be brought back to life, especially since it's in the intro. I know. That's the thing is it's gone, but it's still in the intro. So it's like, okay, it either gets a repeat performance or it had family. I always want to say family because that's going to make it real interesting. We kind of, oh, yeah. we're, we're, we're sorry that we accidentally, well, honestly, I was trying to do something to his kill Accid your brother. Yeah, <laughs> kind of accidentally on purpose turned him to stone and then that statue got broken. It wasn't our fault that his head was fragile. Uh, too soon? <laughs> As you can tell so far, we really enjoyed it. Oh, really? I don't think they have any clue. <laughs> Maybe we could rewrite history. Solve some mysteries? I don't know. Grab onto some duck tails? Ah, uh, but not pony tails. Or cotton tails. But duck tails. Woohoo. <laughs> We're going to be doing this a lot, folks. Uh. So how much can the internet store? <laughs> a lot. The whole Library of Congress and then some. Back to DuckTales. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> yes, and so in addition to Webigail being aged up so that she's more in line with the triplets, also being Kicktail instead of someone who's going to need rescuing, we seem to be missing the chauffeur because Launchpad was driving the car. Hmm. Also going back to Webigail real quick, did you notice that her doll was pinned to the wall with an arrow through it? In the background of the episode where she's pointing out the family tree, the doll's clearly pinned to the wall, probably from a crossbow bolt. Well, yeah, crossbow's easier to fire, and because of the locking mechanism, you can have it cocked and ready to go, unlike with a traditional bow where you have to draw and stay at draw until you release. Also, shorter bolt. I also really like how they handle launch pad. And him going, I'm a pilot! And then... <laughs> 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 yes. Uh. And then, any questions? When did Launchpad become a pilot? <laughs> Roger, kid I just met! <laughs> <laughs> Love him. God, I hope they do a Darkwing Duck reboot. Please, for the love of God! <laughs> Don't tease me like this, Disney! <laughs> Please, just to shut him up. Also, I wouldn't mind a tailspin or a Chippendale Rescues Rangers. Chippendale Rescue Rangers, for the love of God. <laughs> but I can't help if I want to see Gadget come back. She was awesome. Yes, they were all awesome. I mean, come on, it dealt with heavy topics too. Like cults. I was just about to bring up the cult. Ooh. <laughs> but back to the Disney show we're currently talking about. Okay, this would be an actual nitpick. Towards the end, everyone is fine except Launchpad because he got bit by several snakes. 
but nobody really seems to be that worried about him. I know it's the comic relief he has a certain immunity. Yeah, I was worried about that through the first watching. I was like, oh. Also, speaking of those particular scenes, I want to find out if he's actually speaking Swedish. I don't think he is, because on second viewing, if you listen carefully, you can catch some of the mangled English. So when he's talking about the sub, and so it sounds like Sabina, which is the name that Webby came up with for her fake friend. It would be funny if they actually find someone named by that and they become friends in the future. Oh, and something you pointed out when Donald was at Glomgold's and he was showing off the family photos. You mean how overprotective Donald is? Yes, the mattress surrounded by pillows for the first steps and that we had the boy in full football gear as the water boy. Also, I can be a little overprotective. Don't ask me to do the Donald Duck voice. I can't do it. <laughs> it's going a little... Speaking of Donald Duck's voice, he is actually voiced by one of the original Donald Ducks. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Though, that might explain where at the beginning he was a little bit harder to understand than normal. Yeah. It was just the first few sentences, and I'm like, well, is it just because I haven't listened to Donald in a while? Or was it actually, you know, some adapting over the course of the script? Definitely that first scene was a little bit, because I couldn't understand that he was saying life jackets. That was the word I was having trouble with. And then, yes, and they put on life jackets. I went, oh. But everything else I could understand perfectly fine, like crazy old broad. All right. No lying, no cheating, and no trouble. Yes, Uncle Donald. I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> That's awesome. This show is awesome. This show is awesome. Have I said how awesome this show is yet? It's awesome. The thing is, you know not every episode's going to be like this. You know they're all going to be epic. They're not all going to be going out in search of treasure. It's going to be a good mix of having Glomgold, of having the Beagle Boys, of having Magicka to spell. Do you have more? Should we start actually wrapping up this audio before it becomes an hour and 30 minutes long? Yeah, it would be bad if the audio is actually longer than the episode. We're getting there. No kidding. It just, there's so much in here, and we're not even touching on half of it, as we've touched some on what went on in Atlantis and you know, that fun little bit of leaving the henchmen behind and her going, um, Mr. Duck, could we um, put my ride? <laughs> that was awesome. Also, one thing I realized in the second viewing was the whole thing's upside down, right? So why are the lasers on the bottom of the bridge? Think about that for one moment. If the whole thing's upside down, those lasers we pointed at the bottom of the bridge. You wouldn't actually trip them if you were walking on top of it. No, you wouldn't. You would trip them if you used the rope like Scrooge did. No, the, the rope was above the bridge. Right, so if you use the when rope... When Scrooge used it, it was below the bridge, which means it would have been on top of the bridge the other way. Exactly. Which means it still wouldn't have been hit by the lasers because it would be above the bridge, which is above the lasers. So that's the only thing that tripped me up. I know why they did it, but I'm like... If this thing was right side up, you wouldn't be hitting those lasers. It makes sense for the fire to come from the top, but you'd want the lasers to go through the bridge in some way. I wonder if it would still trip if you were walking over them, because if it's underneath the bridge and they still trip if you step on the wood, then you wouldn't see them. Then you would trip them and wouldn't know it. Which I think is how it would have to work in order for it to actually work. Or the question is, did they go in and just have one more death trap after it was upside down and went, wait, no, you know, let's just throw in one more and have this one work right side up. Yeah, because they had to have come in after it sank to put that plaque up. Yeah. I mean, really? Guys, yeah, we need to do something to tell people how much of idiots we were. Why, man? Well, if we don't do this, the new DuckTales won't happen. Oh. <laughs> All right, and rewinding back more towards the beginning, Glomgold's employee video. <laughs> yeah. Find an idea. Take it. Make it yours. Better. Mm. Faster. Cheaper. Bigger. Also, he stamps the child when he says cheaper. That, to me, seems like a veiled allusion to child labor. <laughs> Could be. I also like, this would give you 20% or 40% off of emergency life vests. You charge people for emergency life vests? Emergency life vest rental while you're on the job. That's what I mean. 
<laughs> you yes. charge people for that? Like, I need a life vest, man. I'm drowning. That would be 15 bucks. Oh, wait. Do you have a card? <laughs> <laughs> we'll say here's 15 bucks. Okay. It's been a minute. <laughs> per minute? I'll just tuck that from your paycheck. <laughs> Sir, why haven't I been paid? Remember how long you wore that life vest? <laughs> He'd do it. You know it. Well, yeah, considering he left them behind. I can't believe he left them behind with the walkie-talkies. Well, he wanted to gloat to Scrooge. But they wouldn't have been with... Well, he wouldn't have known that they would be with Scrooge. Because Scrooge was supposed to be in the final death trap being killed, so... Yeah, I see what you mean there. So that doesn't really make sense, but it would have tipped them off if he asked for the walkie-talkies back. Hmm, yeah. It was just a final chance to gloat. Also, I'm pretty sure their designs are actually from the original show as well. I think they were in the original show somewhere. I don't know if they were Glumgold's lackeys, but I'm pretty sure they were someone else's lackeys. Or they may be part of Fowl from Darkwing Duck. Fowl was the evil organization for those who don't remember. So, should we actually wrap things up or do you have more you suddenly remembered that we need to go over? Because I'm perfectly okay with that. Because I love talking about this show. Yeah, the thing is, ladies and gentle Colts, we're going to stop recording and this is still going to be going on. So, how late is it yet? Uh, late enough that we should probably stop this. Shall you go first? <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. And I don't really think there's much to summarize. We like the show, you can tell. And thank you, Disney, for putting it free online for all to view. It's gotten like over 3 million views. They've probably made up the cost just in ad revenue. On YouTube alone. And Disney's probably going, hmm, I don't think they're going to release the other episodes this way. I wish they would. But the nice thing is, as long as you have one of the major satellite or cable writers and have an account with them, you can log into the Disney XD app and watch it free on there. Though you probably will have a day's delay, just like everything else. Companies, that doesn't help you. No, all that does is tell us that we need to go pirate it so that we can watch it on time. If we want to watch it the day of, let us watch it the day of! You'll make more money! But less of us complaining and more about, as Ember said, this show is awesome. Go and watch it. I will put a link to the official video in the description. Click on it and go. Then come back and watch us again, please. And this has been our thoughts on DuckTales 2017. Season 1, Episode 1. Woo! I really like want to be able to throw some more DuckTales stuff in this outro, but it's not working in my head. Thank you for listening. I think this might actually turn out longer than the episode itself. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um, if you're still here, that means you probably like this. There's a button where you can tell the internet that you like this video. There's another one where you can subscribe so you find out about new videos. There's also a place where you can tell us how insane we were to spend this much time talking about this video. Like that we didn't spend enough time and we glossed over your favorite part and how dare we. In nicer terms than that though, please. I do have fragile egos. If you enjoy Lex's art, you can find more of it on Tumblr, DeviantArt, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, a couple Mastodon servers, and I believe he's exploring the depths of Reddit. What a strange place this is. Really like Lex's art and would maybe like some of your own? should say custom art of your own. He does take commissions. Check the link for availability. Willing and able to throw some support our way financially, but can't think of what you would ask Lux to draw? Yeah, yeah, I've had that feeling with artists before. I like your work, but I don't know what I'd ask you for. But I want to do something for you. We have Patreon and Kofi. Patreon starts at a dollar, which now includes sketches, and Kofi works in increments of three. Thanks again.